at the moment we're not too far from the Ganges. Um, it's an interesting river complex, exceptionally large, and an awful lot of interesting things end up in the Ganges. We understand that there has been an outbreak of diarrhea in, in Bangladesh, and we need to make sure that uh, we avoid it arriving on board because it could potentially spread quite quickly. The ship produces its own fresh water, so it's completely self-sufficient. The water plant sucks up seawater and filters out all the salt and bad bits, making 150 tonnes of clean water a day. But the Bangladesh Delta doesn't look or smell too promising. We need to make sure we can produce water safely. So we're going through the process of starting the um, uh, analysis of the water and making sure we can make it. Um, at the moment, the, the sediment is extending about 20 miles out to sea. So that's why it's quite important that um, we look carefully what we're doing and we do not block up our filters, because that's the last thing we want to do. As 150 marines begin the invasion of Matabari Island, the locals move in for a closer look. They've never seen anything like it. And neither have new recruits like Rosie. It's bizarre, but I'm sure we'll get used to it. It's dead gone. They're going to make the beach their home. So, down to business, digging the toilets with an audience. Ah, uh, mad. Helping the little uh, bugger off. Let lads uh, use the latrines on their own. But they've no time to worry about that now. They get into their boats and give the islanders something worth watching. Move! Move in! Oh, oh, Go! These lads will be going out to Afghanistan next March. A very different environment to this one. Sam Figure Stops is what we do. And you need to maintain that skill set. Um, you always get that question, there are, are there any rubber boats in the Helmand Valley? Well, clearly there are not. However, if we don't expose a, a generation of Marines to what they do when we move on from the campaigns we're currently fighting, then we've lost that knowledge forever. So very important we get a balance right between maintaining this knowledge and also preparing for operations next year. Bangladesh is a stable Muslim country with close ties to the UK. Over the next few days, their army is going to be training with Charlie Company. It's the first time in 10 years that a Royal Navy warship has visited their waters. So they're making the most of it. But they need to be in a firing position before these move. To be honest, they're quite good. There's, there's a bit of a language barrier, but they're not actually that bad, to be fair. But we were told they were a pretty professional force before we come here anyway. <laughs> Mega enthusiastic. But the most lethal aspect of this exercise, the water. You could smell it, aren't we? Yeah, it's uh, honking. You won't want to be tripping up and getting a gobful. Back on Bulwark, the marine engineers have had a disaster trying to make fresh water out of the Bangladeshi sea. I've just come up from one of the uh, engine rooms uh, with this filter, which is from one of our reverse osmosis plants. This filter, which started life looking like that, has, uh, has blocked in about three hours. Uh, normally it takes about two months for, uh, for filters to, uh, to block. Uh, and whilst we carry a lot of the filters, we don't carry enough to use them at the rate of a set every, uh, every three hours. And now one of the four pumps has bust. Fresh water levels are running dangerously low. And the commander, he's not a happy man. One of my biggest concerns is uh, we've currently got about 150 Royal Marines ashore at the moment. And one of our supporting uh, roles is to make sure that when they return back on board, that we can uh, clean their kit and most importantly, they can get a shower. So if we do not provide that, uh, that water to support that, then we've failed in our role. Drastic action has to be taken. Freshwater restrictions are now enforced for the duration of the exercise. Showers are limited to one per day and are to be kept short. The laundry will now only be accepting chef's wipes, overalls, underwear and socks. Bad enough. Down on two deck, the Chinese laundrymen are first to be affected by the water crisis. 
I've been doing this job since uh, 1985. Uh, we have another two laundrymen to work with me. One is Julius Lee, one is Mr. Choi. They all working over 30 years in the Navy already. You only need to have two hands and working hard, that's it. <laughs> Restricted to cleaning just overalls and underwear means Steve and his laundry men will have a mountain to get through when the ban is lifted. You, you still can see we, we have loads and loads of the laundry to do. We do it as much as we can. I, ho I hope everybody can be understand about this. <laughs> On the vehicle deck, Captain Matt Hingston is leading a team to go ashore. The Marines need an enemy, and some of the ship's company have bravely volunteered. We'll act as a target for uh, Charlie Company, and we're playing the part of a terrorist cell or a terrorist training camp. So we'll be playing that part to, to this maximum. We're firing off rounds, making plenty of noise. We'll, uh, we'll always try and get the ship's company to work alongside the squadron. It gets them off the ship, and it gets them a great experience. One of the volunteers is stores room assistant Kate Chaddock. There was an email that went around which um, said any volunteers who would like to be enemy. And so I was like, I'd like to give that a go. Shooting blanks at the Marines. Okay, yeah. The enemy heads off to face certain defeat. Another volunteer is Mike McMahon. Nicknamed Irish for obvious reasons. It's the first time I've ever done any of this, and really enjoying it so far. Well, obviously, these boys, this is their bread and butter, but for us, it's just a bit of a laugh, you know. We get to play dead, but we get to get up again, you know. So it does give us more of an appreciation for what the Marines do, because obviously, we only see them around the ship doing the day to day things that we do, and then they go off and do stuff like this, and then come back, and we're like, oh, well, yeah, whatever. So getting out there and getting amongst it with them is, is really good fun. This is deepest, darkest uh, Bangladesh uh, on the on the main sort of estuary. We're going to make it as challenging uh, position for uh, Charlie Company to take, and it will be challenging. The terrain itself makes it challenging without us even being here. Matt's got to keep a close eye on his navy recruits. Just pick a spot, guys. It's sort of a, a bit of a circle. Whose day jobs rarely take them off the ship. A lot of them probably never spend a night in the field. In, back in UK, let alone uh, on the other side of the world. So it's all new, and I know it's uh, challenging for them. Setting up our mozzie nets, that's what we're going to sleep in tonight. Stop the creepy crawlies getting us while we're having our sweet dreams. We have anacondas, pythons, a few other nasties. Um, the river that we've just come down has got crocodiles in there. Um, there was a lesser female vampire bat that carries rabies, which I really liked hearing about. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there's, and then mosquitoes obviously carry malaria. But it's not bedtime for everyone. Under cover of darkness, the Marines have got into boats and are travelling up river to find where the enemy's camped. Lieutenant Rob Garside is leading the recce. And we've moved to 100 metres inland and uh, we've, we've uh, found some light sources that we're just got a couple of guys checking out at the moment. The thing about round here is you don't know what's, uh, what's watching you. Uh, probably fall into an alligator pit or something. Irish is on sentry duty. He's been told to look out for the Marines. I haven't heard a thing. Not a thing which is either saying they're not close enough yet or they're just really good. They're looking for numbers of the camp, position of the camp, best ways to attack the camp. Charlie Company is now only a few metres away. Begins. This doesn't happen in the movies. Yeah, see it. 